let's get started here. Uh, thanks for uh, everyone attending this presentation. Um, my name is Darren Houston. I'll be the presenter for today. I also have um, Tom with me here, uh, who's going to help me run this presentation. And then also, um, you know, if there's any Q and A at the end, he'll he'll help uh, he'll help uh, manage that. So today we're going to be talking about um, some of the changes um, in the uh, Microsoft licensing world. Uh, also, how you know that applies to you know our product, iTrack 365. Um, so for those of you that don't know, iTrack 365 is our um, health, safety, environment, compliance, quality, operations, does kind of everything under the sun for you um, platform um, that does run on top of Microsoft Dynamics 365. So today, the you know I'll give some background on what that all looks like. Um, licenses are required in, in the setup and management of uh, users and employees. And then there's also going to be some supplemental information um, that will be part of this um, PowerPoint that we'll distribute um, for reference after this meeting. So when we talk about iTrack 365 and running on top on top of Dynamics, what do we mean? Well, it really runs on top of you know what used to be called Microsoft CRM. Microsoft CRM now became what was called common data service with first party app like you know you could install sales, you can install field service, uh, customer service, things like that. Um, Microsoft just recently um, announced that they're renaming the uh, common data service or CDS now called um, Microsoft Data Flex Pro. So shout out to the 80s there with Microsoft's name convention. Um, but really, DataFlex Pro is the the common data service. So if you know common data service, you know you know DataFlex Pro. Um, so what is this thing, right? Well, it's really you know a, a layer to secure, securely store and manage your um, business application data. Um, so whether you're running you know sales, field service, um, you know customer service, um, that's all running on that. If you build some power apps that use that data, obviously that's all run on that. And then you can integrate that to, you know, things like Business Central and um, Dynamics 365 F1O and things like that, right? So if you have an account um, in one system, it's the same account in another system and, you know, it just keeps the, uh, the, the data uh, in sync that way. Um, so really, you know, um, DataFlex Pro, the, the core um, includes, um, you know things like activities, accounts, contacts, some of the uh, the core stuff that um, you need to um, build these applications. And then on top of that, right, you, you get the whole Power Platform suite too. So you can, you know, hook up Power BI. You know, we talk about Power Apps, you know, Power Automate, all that kind of stuff, um, along with you know using other things like, you know, Microsoft's AI and and all that kind of good stuff. So what does the core look like? Um, core looks like this, right? So you've got um, kind of your out of the box entities. So your accounts and contacts, activities, things like that. Um, if you install any of the first party solutions like sales, you know, you'll get access to things like leads and opportunities and all the other sales functionality. Um, and then when you also put iTrack on top of this, then you get the iTrack antis too. So your, you know, your forms, form types, um, you know, hazards, risks, all that, all that kind of stuff that we built. So there's just another uh, look at when you log in um, to, you know, well, what's now called DataFlex Pro Core, right? Um, this is what the core suite looks like. So when I go to my Dynamics 365 link and open up the core, this is this is what I see. So now in terms of um, not only Dynamics but iTrack, um, what type of licenses are we going to deal with today, right? Um, so there's uh, a few tiers of licenses. Um, we used to use Dynamics 365 for team members for iTrack, um, but as some of you know, um, the Dynamics team members has now been limited in terms of its uh, functionality. It used to be uh, pretty open. Um, you know, um, you, you could read and write to mostly entities in the system. Uh, now it limits it to, I believe, 15 entities. Uh, that you can deal with. Uh, so that might be OK if you're, you know, having some people, you know, work with some sales processes or customer processes, but it's not OK when you're dealing with iTrack, right? Because iTrack has um, many hundreds of uh, entities, right? So 
the team members is is no good anymore, right? The restrictions were supposed to happen by now where Microsoft was clamping down on this. Um, that's been moved to, I think, end of the year because of COVID, um, which means if you're running these for, for iTrack or if you're running these team members for other apps you've built um, that go beyond those restrictions, you know, you really need to look at some other licensing scenarios here. Um, so maybe that's where you move into what we'll call, call the full Dynamics 365 licenses that used to be, you know, CRM licenses. So these are things like the sales enterprise field service, customer service, right? This um, enables um, a lot of the system access for you. So, so, you know, if you get one of these full licenses, uh, you do get a lot of functionality with the system. Um, or, you know, if you don't want to pay, um, you know, what these things cost, you can move to now some of the uh, Power Apps licenses. So the Power Apps per app plan license, you know, Power Apps per user plan license. Um, really what it is, is the Power Apps per app plan, you know, allows you to run um, two uh, Power Apps, um, but also with that it includes uh, connection to, um, you know, what used to be called CDS or now Dataflex Pro, right? So if your application runs on Dataflex Pro, um, perfect, that gives you access to that. So for you know an iTrack portal user, you know minimum licensing would be this per app plan. Um, a per user plan actually allows you um, you know unlimited apps, right? So you know if you're running more than than you know two apps, um, you know well maybe you you uh, get a few licenses of the per app plan, or maybe you use use the uh, user plan, right? It all depends on you know where that crossover is between um, you know price and price and apps. Um, and then there's also something new that Microsoft came out with not too long ago is, is Power Apps per app plan for Teams. What this means is if you've integrated uh, a Power Apps into Teams and you're using that Power Apps through Teams, um, you can use this license. So what that means is if you're using iTrack, the, the, the full breadth of iTrack through um, Teams, um, you can use the per app plan license for that, or you can also use the app plan for Teams license for that. The difference is, is you can you can buy the app plan license yourself. You can get through your partner. The um, app plan for Teams there is bought directly from Microsoft, usually through your EA or enterprise agreement. Um, and as far as I know, it's it's a 500 uh, license minimum. Um, it is much more cost effective than these other ones. But again, you know, the restrictions are you need to use your app through Teams uh, and it is bought directly through Microsoft at a 500 seat minimum. So. For larger users, this is good, right? And then um, some of you out there might also have the Power Apps P1 and P2 plans. Uh, P1 really became the uh, per app plan. P2 really became the per user plan. These things are now discontinued and kind of in grandfather mode, right? So um, if you're just getting into this, you'll see these and you shouldn't use these. All right, so what are we going to talk about today? Um, I'll show you some user management stuff. I'll actually show this live. I just include some screen caps here. Uh, so when you get this PowerPoint after the after the webinar, you can you can reference this. So we'll look at licensing from a user management perspective. Um, you know how you assign it from a capacity management perspective, and then how you deal with the uh, users and employees in iTrack. And then real quickly, we've also included some other resources with this PowerPoint um, in terms of you know what these licenses give you um, uh, from a capacity standpoint and how they apply. Right, so here's Power Apps per app, you know, what you can do with them, um, you know, per user licenses, and then a decision chart, you know, so who are your users, what do they need to do, and kind of then which licenses is going to suit them. And then also some, of, um, like if you're running, say, you know, Business Central, or, you know, you've got some sales guys that need to also do um, you know, some customer service stuff. There, there are add-on or attached licenses. So this chart kind of uh, walks through that. And then a uh, quick summary on license requirements for external users, because that comes up quite a bit on when do I need to license, um, you know, people or not license people. So this, this is Rail licensing guide explains that. And then uh, two links here. So how to manage capacity add-ons, and then also I'll, I'm going to be talking about this baseline access license. 
So if you need to get those into your environment, there's the URL to, to get those spun up. So with that, I will go now into the actual demo. So first off is, you know, obviously before we do anything with licenses, you need licenses. Um, so like I said, within your um, Microsoft 365 environment, you can purchase licenses yourselves. Uh, you can purchase licenses through your Microsoft Enterprise Agreement if you have one, um, or if you have a partner, um, like me, uh, iTrack 365 is a uh, um, tier one CSP, right? So we can get licenses um, from Microsoft on your behalf, um, you know, just partner up with a partner like us so we can also acquire the licenses. So I'm in my uh, partner portal here. Um, I'm going to be demoing on our iTrack 365 environment, which is also where our shared COVID environment runs. Um, so you can see the licenses that have been acquired for there. So we've got a Power BI Pro license, so we can do some Power BI. We've got um, two exchange licenses, uh, plan one, so that you know the system can do some emails. And then here's the Power Apps Pro App Plan licenses, right? So there's eight of those that we've acquired for this environment. And you can see the difference here. Um, you know, these are licenses. This is called an add-on license. And I'll, I'll get into um, how you deal with that. And then we also have uh, one of the full Dynamics 365 licenses. This is for our, our user. It's, it's uh, you know, for doing workflows and things like that, you need a full license. So that's that's also why we have one of those. And then you can also see our, our Azure here run into, right? So, um, you know, if, if you, don't have Azure, again, you can get your partner to, you know, acquire the uh, the Azure for you and, and manage those resources. So I, I've added a few licenses here, you know, again, it's as simple as going in and purchasing them yourself or, you know, asking your partner to do it and we'll acquire them. And then they show up in your Office 365 uh, admin center. And I'll show that here. So now I'm logged into the iTrack 365, um, Office 365 admin center. So if I look at um, my active users, um, I filter the list here. I've got the uh, iTrack support user here. So if I click this user, and go to licenses and apps, um, to use uh, DataFlex Pro um, and iTrack, you need at minimum a Power Apps per app um, license. Um, this user does have a full Dynamics license, but let's just ignore that for now. Because the uh, Power Apps per app license is an add-on license, um, you don't actually assign it anymore to the user through um, the license management area. What you have to do for these users is that URL I showed you, you have to sign up for um, these free Power Apps per app baseline access licenses. So when you click that link, you know, if you're an Office admin, um, it says, you know, would you like to add them? You say yes, it gives you 10,000 of these licenses. So clicking on this license, what that does is say, yes, this user is now able to access, you know, Power Apps, right? Um, so if this user wasn't licensed with the Dynamics 365 field service license, I would turn on this guy here the Power Apps for App Baseline license, and then just save changes. And what that's telling the system is, okay, this user is now able to use Power Apps, um, you know, which is a requirement for, you know, the full blown version of iTrack. If they're a mobile only user, um, they don't actually need um, any Dynamics licenses, but um, they do need to be set up in the system to use mobile. So let's assume we turn that on, you know, save changes. The other thing you can do too is uh, you can um, manage licenses through groups. So we also have groups that manage who gets added to the Dynamics environment. So we have a group here called iTrack 365. So any group that or any users that are added to this group or this group's added to users um, will get assigned um, a license automatically. And then once and then that also controls the access to the uh, Dynamics 365 environment or, you know, um, the, the CDS or uh, Flex Pro. So let's assume they've got the group that gets them into the Dynamics. You know, let's assume they've got that license. 
we're all good here now. So now what we have to do is we have to make sure we've actually dealt with our Power Apps per app license. And how you do that is you do it through the um, Power Platform Admin Center. So when I log in, you can see my environments here. So these used to be, you know, the CRM environments, um, which moved to now CDS Core, which is now, you know, Dataflex Pro, right? So we've got our iTrack 365 environment here. Um, what I want to do is I want to come down to resources here. I want to click capacity. So this is my capacity. Um, you can see across the board, you know, how my storage is being used. So with the new model, um, you've got some database storage, log storage, and file storage. Um, every time you assign capacity or you assign licenses um, for these environments, you, you've get, you, you get extra resources. So that means extra storage. Um, you can get more API calls, that kind of stuff. And that's all stuff you can you can look at through uh, analytics and that to see, you know, who are your heavy users and, you know, are they going beyond their, their usage? Uh, but what we want to focus on here is the add-on licenses. So you can see now app passes, right? So I've got app passes here. I've got app passes for Microsoft Teams. So this is where you manage the, uh, the per app um, licenses. Um, per app licenses will go to app passes. The per app licenses for Teams will go here. And all I have to do is I click manage. And here they are. So power apps or flows. So I've got three remaining. So I just have to go put this up to eight. Save the changes. Now I've assigned all my app passes or my power apps per app licenses um, to the iTrack 365 environment. So it's, it's kind of, um, you know, you kind of have to have a one to one, right? Um, you have a user um, that's got the uh, baseline access license, and then you have to make sure that however many users are used in this system. Um, so, you know, that, that could be considered, you know, iTrack portal users or people using iTrack through um, the portal app through the teams um, have to have a license. So if I have eight users, I need eight licenses. It's not going to stop you if I have eight users and I only got five licenses assigned. It's still going to work, but um, again, you're going to be offside. It should be um, one app pass per, per user. Okay, now that um, licensing is dealt with, um, because these users have been assigned to the security group that allows them in the system, and now they're, they're licensed with the baseline access license, if I come in here into my users, you will see these folks in here now. So if I come down to iTrack support, there's the user. I can click them. This is one of the issues with uh, COVID-19 and everyone working from home and a huge increase in the usage of the Microsoft products is sometimes they, you know, even Microsoft with their whole Azure infrastructure can't even keep up with demand anymore here. So, yeah, this is not uh, not looking good. See if I can work it through Chrome. So assume I clicked into that user um, because they're a licensed user. They are here, um, and then you just have to manage their roles. So whether that be a Dynamics or iTrack, you know, just click the the roles you need. Um, so with iTrack, you know, you really have two main roles that you care about. Uh, it's iTrack manager, which means that this user can see all um, forms in the system or iTrack user, which means um, they can only see their forms. So that's that's kind of the two ones. Or again, if it's a, you know, Dynamics user, you know, you'd be selecting, a, you know, salesperson or, or sales manager or something like that. And then the other thing to do too is also come down here and go into the administrative mode and make sure you've got the setup correctly. So there's the read write, um, the administrative. Administrative is more uh, for folks that are like IT, they're just um, running the users in that. 
and then there's the uh, non-interactive, which are um, really more for you know either users who are not signed into this and, and just using an external system or um, service accounts, right? They're connecting um, a system to, to Dynamics. So that's how you do it. Uh, and then within iTrack, so I've, I've logged into iTrack here. Um, what you want to do is you want to set up all users as employees. So all users should really be employees, but not all employees are users, and I'll explain that. So you can see here's the iTrack support user. I'm under my employees area. Um, it is linked to the, the user account, right? Um, so what that means now is I've got the licensed user. I've got the employee record. Um, this person can now log into the iTrack portal, right? They've got the license. They've got the user. Um, you know, they're called the, uh, the portal portal access or portal user for, for iTrack. Um, they can also log into Dynamics themselves to um, this Dynamics interface if, if they need to um, with the right permissions. Now, if, if, if they were just going to be um, a, a mobile only user, um, they don't need to be licensed from a Microsoft perspective. Um, that means they're just using the iTrack mobile and the iTrack connector in, in Azure. So what that would mean is you would create the employee record, but you wouldn't actually have a user to link it to, right? What's important then is you create the employee record and then you come in here to user options admin. Now it is named a little funny because we've migrated this to the employee, but um, basically you would you would create one of these records for for the employee, right? And what the uh, user option admin record does is it basically tells the system that um, you know well a few things really is is you know what areas um, of the portal or what areas of iTrack can can this person see and use. So you can see for the support iTrack user, we've got a lot of the areas turned on, you know, jobs, equipment, procedures, comps, all that kind of stuff. Um, but then it also is where the mobile device pin is synchronized with the uh, iTrack um, mobile connector in, in Azure. The other thing too is, is if the user has a, a company set, um, if they are a portal user, when they log into the iTrack portal, um, you can specify theming, right? So you can have multiple themes depending on, you know, who the user is, right? So if you have, say, you know, three sub companies under your corporate umbrella, you know, all the users of one company can have a different theme than, you know, users of another company. So again, to recap, um, you know, if an iTrack user um, uses the portal, they need to have the proper Microsoft Dynamics or, you know, Flex Pro licenses. They have to have the user in Dynamics 365 uh, and they have to have an employee created with that user attached and the user options and mid record um, created. If they're a mobile only user, there's no Microsoft licensing. There's no setting up a user. It's just go in here, create your employee, uh, create your user options and mid record and away we go. So the only other thing I want to mention that is sometimes forgotten is if I go back to the employee record here and I go into um, company information, it, it used to be for old iTrack versions that um, the email on the user record was what the hub used, the mobile hub used to connect um, or basically to create a, a, an account um, within the mobile connector that says, you know, here's your, um, you know, email and pin to, to use mobile. That's now been migrate to the employee record, right? So you have to make sure that if you want to use iTrack mobile, you need to fill in the company email record here under contact information. So that, that's one of the steps that are usually forgotten when our customers are setting these things up is to fill in the email address here. And then they wonder why, you know, that mobile pin's not syncing across uh, in the user options admin record.
So that's uh, all I have for today. Um, if I just go back to the, uh, the links here, again, if you want to look at how do you manage the capacity add-ons, uh, not only for you know, Dynamics 365, but also for other power apps and that, uh, here's a link to the Microsoft documentation for that. Um, and again, if you need to um, add a bunch of these uh, per app baseline access licenses for your uh, organization, um, here's a link that you can use to, to get those. So with that, I will turn it over to see if there's any QA. Thanks, everyone. So if anybody's got any Q&A questions, please post them in the chat and we'll answer them. All right, thanks for your time, everyone. And if you have any follow-up questions, you can always email them to support at itrack365.com. Thanks a lot.